Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Connections with myself, Dimitri Ktoulos, my trusted co-host, Andrada Pobandorka. And today, we have a very, very special guest, a very uh, a good friend from India, Mr. Kabir Kate. How are you doing, Kabir? I'm good, I'm good, guys. Good to see you after so long. Yeah, we. It's you, really nice to see you, Kabir. Yes, Kabir was an old um, university uh, mate from ours, so we actually all met in University of Salford, yeah, the UK. So, so many, uh, so many years ago. So uh, Kabir now is actually a marketing manager and also has his own production company. And uh, Kabir, we wanted to get into that, but before before we do that, how is India doing now with this situation with COVID nineteen? Uh, we uh, it it came very late or uh, it came in the later part uh, of the pandemic like the pandemic came very late to india i guess it was at its peak uh, around march in europe okay. that's right yeah hey guys uh, we had a lockdown very early around the 19th of march um, we had a national lockdown uh, and every lockdown was announced after 15 days uh, that it was uh, in faces yeah because uh, people might get restless uh, and all of that so after every 15 days the lockdown was extended currently uh, we call it lockdown 5.0 so it's the fifth lockdown since march <laughs> really is that the nickname they gave it 5.0 is that what the media yeah, is so using after, yeah, yeah so after every uh, uh, after our prime minister speaks he extends the lockdown after every speech increases the lockdown that's how five times till now he has uh, increased that lockdown okay because i i don't know i've been trying to search information about covid and india and the numbers are everywhere so i don't know exactly how many have infected and this and that what exactly is going on what are the numbers we were really, really under control, uh, looking at the density of population and we being the second most populous country in the world. Uh, but uh, now, now the situation is getting a bit scary. Okay. Uh, the number increasing. Uh, but out of the 35 states in India, uh, it's there only in the major states. So okay. The number... The number is close to half a million as of now. Infections. Yeah, it's it's roughly around uh, uh, five hundred thousand as of now. Uh, but uh, the major cities, the big cities, the financial hubs of the country, uh, like Delhi, the national capital, uh, Mumbai, uh, the financial capital, which is about a couple of hours from my city. I'm in Pune. Bom so Delhi, Bombay, Pune, and a couple of more cities. These are the cities with the maximum infections. Okay, uh, makes sense. Roughly, yeah. So roughly, so my city is somewhere around twenty thousand. Wow. Uh, Bombay, Bombay is around one lakh, a hundred thousand. Because uh, uh, the Guardian announced like four hours ago that the number of infections worldwide became ten million now. And uh, from somewhere that I read on an Indian online newspaper, it said that uh, the infections in India was two million. But I, I think that I think that's wrong, right? I, I don't think you've heard any uh, uh, any such extreme numbers. Uh, not really, but I'm not surprised by two million uh, because uh, try and understand the density of population in India is very crazy. Uh, it's it's of course not like the West. Uh, okay. it's, it's insane here. So uh, how is it for you now? Like, how how is it for you when you're going out and do you are you allowed to go out? Are you with curfew? Yeah, yeah, we we allowed to go out. Uh, activities are open from uh, seven a.m. to seven p.m. Okay. Um, what kind of activities like? Can you meet like all with the friends? Shops in the uh, no, you can't meet because all the restaurants are shut. All the cafes and restaurants are shut. Uh, markets are open in terms of uh, fruits and vegetables and, of course, medical support, hospitals and all of that. Restaurants are shut. Uh, only home deliveries are allowed. 
and work places are shut so work right. places everyone is working from home where i come from pune which is very close to bombay uh, pune is the it hub of india okay so my friend are in the it sector and it's massive here All the biggest of the players are here and most of the city is of it professionals all of them are working from home so we have massive it parks on both sides of the city and uh, yeah all are working from home uh, so when i go out i i do go out for a drive like this morning i was out i had gone to to a cousin's place just for lunch okay so okay. you're allowed to meet with the family and stuff then yes 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 okay. earlier there were some restrictions now the movement from 7 am to 7 pm is pretty much there all right and so now has it been extended to the 15th of july the lockdown yes yes okay so how how is it affecting you yeah sorry so how is it affecting you like on a personal level first like what are you feeling is, is it mentally has it been okay what what do you do to to feel good uh yeah it, it's it's not uh, depressing to be honest uh, that's good and i'm very sure most uh, most of the people in india on it, it's not the case because we live in large families uh, so uh, you don't feel alone major, yeah yeah for the major part of the lockdown there were 10 to 12 people in my house oh, wow also also because my grandmom passed away as i told you in april there were a lot of people okay uh, so it was, uh, and uh, there is work from home happening on a personal level what has hit the most is is that our salaries are cut by 50% even if you work full time uh to be honest i work in a shopping mall so there isn't that much work there is work all that we are doing are we are working on strategy that when the mall opens what will be our strategy okay all we have been working on is the strategy post lockdown and okay. uh, that is pretty much like 2 3 hours of the day and it's just like discussions over calls and all of that there's yeah. nothing concrete i mean so it's good that, that, that you at least have the family around because i don't know it, it was the same with andrada in romania as well we there were there were times when we hadn't seen our parents for i don't know i mean for me personally it was more than a month how was oh. it for you andrada i can't remember well i mean for me it was like a couple of weeks and most because i left bucharest when the lockdown started uh, i didn't want to be in the capital closed in in a uh, in an apartment here so i went back home but i didn't go and stay with my parents because i didn't want in case you know i got i got a virus in bucharest i didn't want to bring it to them so i stayed separate from them in in the countryside for about two weeks so yeah i didn't see them for, for yeah. that amount of time and then when i did see them i didn't hug them i didn't kiss i just like they stayed away from me right. we just spoke from a distance um yeah so for yeah for us it was very different Yeah. But I did want to ask you Kabir you said yeah your grandmother passed passed away and I'm so sorry for your loss but what happened with the funeral were you allowed to um organize the the funeral uh, did you I don't know about the Indian rituals but is it supposed to right. um are you supposed to invite a big group of people like a big family and everybody did you manage to do that how did it happen Yeah so my case is a bit of an exception Uh, because um, as you guys know i don't know if dem knows but andy knows for sure that i come from political background here My father was into politics and all of that because of that uh, our social liabilities are very big so there are lot lots and lots of people so if it wasn't for lockdown there would have been 10000 people for the funeral oh, wow. 10000 wow wow that's the number but since it was the lockdown uh, we we took full responsibility we were very careful we were cautious and uh, still we didn't we didn't tell many of them but still there were roughly around 500 600 people and that's allowed you didn't have a limitation for how many people you can receive of course of course 
of course it's not allowed not more than 10, 8 to 10 people are allowed uh, but the authorities supported us because uh, yeah, because because father has some name in the society and of course the police force was there and uh, proper social distancing mask sanitize a lot of things were maintained okay anyway, and what we did is uh, we we did the rituals very early in the morning so that a lot of people don't gather oh, okay how is it had to hide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We did it at eight eight a.m. in the morning. Okay. And uh, so, so how how has it how has it been now then with the uh, I mean in Europe at the beginning especially there were problems with uh, getting face masks and hand sanitizers. How's it been for India? Uh, so what, one thing good which has happened is, uh, I guess it's a very big topic, we can cover it later. Uh, it's to do with, of course, uh, the whole uh, whole China angle to all of this, right? Of course, yeah. Uh, so our prime minister was really, really popular, especially among the, among the women of the country, time and again announced uh, about make in India, make in India. Since India is such a huge population, uh, Masks and PPA kits and all of that later was uh, uh, had started production on a rapid scale. So I don't see that uh, uh, shortfall. And uh, in fact, if you know about the drug hydro hydro hydrochlorine, like some hydrochlor, I don't know how to uh, what to call it. But this drug was need like India gave this drug in a huge quantity to the US and to some countries in the Europe. So we are the largest producers of that drug I've in, heard the, that, yeah. in the world. So that ways we have been pretty self-sufficient, uh, but of course our, our infrastructure is not that great. The beds are very limited. The ventilators are very, very limited. So, but oh. the, from what I've heard, I mean, also from what you said about the comparing with the density of the population there hasn't been like such um, huge amounts of people in need of serious care right uh, uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, poor sections of the society in the big cities as well the slums and uh, yeah the slums and and the really poverty struck people they stay pretty close like like they stay in like a 10 by 10 room they are really next to each other okay uh, so most of these zones have been are called containment zones there are barricades no one can enter these zones because uh, the cases here are pretty, pretty high oh wow yeah so how, how do they get food and all though Sorry, what how do they get food there who did they get? How do they get like food and uh, materials to, oh, you know, oh, every day? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so um, that, that the containment zone, uh, the supply chains are different. Like there is a lot of precautions taken. Uh, the government supply chains are there directly for food and all of that. Okay. They're locked completely. Of course, the, the medicals and, and the food, food shops are open. But that supply chain has uh, is very closely monitored because okay. it's uh, chances there are higher. Okay, so um, I mean, I guess uh, Andrada, if, if maybe we should uh, move on to uh, more about the business on our artistic side of Kabir. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, he's a marketing manager and uh, also has his own uh, video production company. So. That's actually interesting that you told us before as well that you work um, like three, four hours from home discussing things. Hasn't there been like a discussion on maybe making a video and like showing how India or the city that you're in has uh, is following the rules uh, and the regulations that are being put? And I don't know, maybe building like something of a societal uh, message to get people like bring people together? Wasn't there any discussion of doing something like this? Uh, yes, yes, there was a lot of discussion about that. Uh, but uh, 
in the earlier parts of the lockdown, it was really, really tough to get permissions and all of that. Um, at the end, uh, one of my friends, who is a part of my production house, he did shoot a video about the police uh, and their sacrifice, like how the policemen are on the roads, uh, taking care of us, how they are not going home, how, how even if they're, they're not entering their house and uh, small kids are waving at them from far and all of that, like a really moving video was done by one of, uh, one of my friends. Okay. Uh, but but on, I'm, I'm, on a, I just find it strange that the uh, the mall that you work in wouldn't want to do such uh, cool stuff as well. I mean, uh, because they play a huge part in the economy. I'm guessing. Right. No. So, so the mall actually, I've shot two videos for the mall. We've oh, done okay. two videos for the mall, uh, but uh, those are really different. Uh, those are uh, like just before our call. Uh, I was just going through the final edit of the video. This video was uh, mainly to do with the precautions taken by the mall. Yeah. There is a whole new infrastructure coming in, uh, the sanitized tunnels, and the markings on the floor, the lifts, the food courts, social distancing to be maintained, but the staff is going to wear, wear how many times are we sanitizing the shopping mall? All of this, uh, uh, contactless payments, uh, parking in spaces, wow, yeah. the mask to be a lot of these guidelines which of course has come from the government whenever the mall opens which we are looking at maybe a month down the line we have to gain that confidence of our customers that guys it's safe to come here yeah of course right. working on that video and the social message actually we were too busy in the csr activities that's really good so you kept your audiences basically interested by doing CSR activities and showing what the people around are doing to help in this situ situation, I guess. Right. So uh, we were mostly talking about uh, who is contributing what. We were also talking about, we also did some major contributions. Uh, we gave about 10,000 PPA kits. We gave about uh, 100,000 masks uh, and a lot uh, of other things as well. Also, uh, to keep them active, or uh, to keep the audience active on digital platforms, we had a lot of live sessions. Oh, wow. That's and, really uh, good. The live sessions were mostly to do with art. Uh, there was a poetry live session. There was a storytelling live session. Uh, there was a fitness live session. There was a dance live session. There was a painting live session. Uh, and Radha, anything you wanted to, I remember you wanted to ask something uh, special. Yes. About, yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I wanted to ask about um, your own production house, because I understand, yeah, like business with marketing for the shopping mall has been affected in a way and you had to readjust. Um, what kind of production did you used to make before the pandemic? And what kind of content are you still producing now if you still have business? Right. Um, Earlier, uh, we used to do a lot of uh, vernacular uh, music videos. So not Hindi is the Indian language, but my mother tongue is Marathi, which is more regional, which is more to do with my state. So since we had good connects in the industry, we used to do a lot of music videos for big music artists. Oh, very nice. It was, uh, yeah. Uh, and we used to do a lot of uh, real estate videos. And so that's pretty huge uh, in the city. A lot of walkthroughs and, and a lot of that kind of stuff. A lot of real estate walkthroughs uh, and motion graphic videos and all of that. So how do you think that's uh, going to change then due, due to the pandemic? I mean, firstly, do you that think that you'll have the same clients? That has already changed. Uh, so... Uh, there are, there's a huge, uh, a lot of payments haven't been released. A lot of uh, payments are on hold. Last three, four months, if I talk about my production house, a lot of clients haven't paid me. Okay. If I'm on the other side, if I'm at the mall, I also haven't paid at all to my vendors. So, uh, so basically what has happened is, uh, before we come to the whole uh, economic, it has affected the economy. 
is a lot of freelancers are in a very bad state. A lot of independent small businesses, freelancers are are in a really really bad shape. Like uh, I have a job, I work in a mall, but my partners in the production house they solely work for the production house. Because okay. one is a photographer, one is a cinematographer. Uh, so so payments haven't been come for the last three to four months. There have been no payments. Uh, we had a couple of people working for us. We couldn't pay them as well because payments weren't coming. And going forward, uh, we are looking at a very different uh, set of clients which we haven't explored because that's the demand. It's the education sector, oh, wow. uh, because a lot of because uh, are going to be needing videos, lectures. Absolutely. They're going to be needing. Yeah. So we've made a pitch video and we are pitching it to them. Uh, but the economy is really in bad shape. Like the the normal flow, the normal cash flow is being hampered in a huge, huge way. Yeah, I mean we've had the same problem as well in Europe. And I, I mean for us, the the I don't know. Do you have the government for low scheme in India where the government helps pay for your salary? Because you said before that you're you you've had reduced salary fifty percent, but doesn't the government help with such things? Uh, so uh, even if after me saying all of this, let it be me or my partners or people around me, uh, we are really really well to do compared uh, to the weaker section of the society. So there are a lot of laborers who work for real estate. They come from small, small towns to big cities. Uh, liftsmen, laborers, security people, uh, people with tiny, tiny uh, shops or counters on the street. These have been affected the most, and that number is close to twenty-five to thirty million. Oh wow! So government is giving a lot of a uh, lot of benefits to these guys. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of free meals, free food grains, medical support, and all of that. So that section really is huge in India. Okay. So in in terms of your production I'll house, just give you, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to give you a sense of what is happening economy wise. Yeah. We'll take an example of my mall. Which will pretty much uh, help you understand what is the situation in the country. I work for the mall officially, right? I am their employee. I am on there, uh, so I get a salary every month, right? So I'm a permanent employee of them. I work for the corporate office. We are roughly around hundred to two hundred people, okay, running this mall. The support staff of the mall is ten thousand people, which includes right. your staff which includes your security or uh, which includes a lot of other miscellaneous so those five thousand to six thousand people have no money because they are not employed the company is not liable to pay oh more wow like free. they're on a contract basis they're oh. contractors and they were just pretty much put on hold oh wow that's yes. just, immediately bad. the next day my last working day was really bad guys my last working day I had to write these really uh, uh, sad mails to all my vendors, all my freelancers that, sorry guys, we have to put you on hold. Uh, oh man. Yeah. So that's the state with pretty much most of the industries in India. This contract based or these freelance labor or, or worker is suffering the most. In terms of your production company, like, uh, how do you see it moving on from here? How do you think you can take advantage of this, of, of course, very sad situation? Right. Uh, so we already uh, discussed it a couple of times in meetings, and we are working towards that. Uh, is uh, is uh, a lot of uh, soft skills. Uh, Basically, people are going to be needing a lot of video con content since they are not visiting each other's offices. First, of course, is the educational sector where uh, we are talking to a couple of big uh, universities in Pune. So Pune, guys, is of course uh, 
the educational hubs of India. So people from all over the country come to my city. Okay. So education is in this city. We are working uh, to get in touch with colleges and do all those lecture videos. Second aspect in terms of corporates, uh, if you guys know corporates have a lot of these trainings, soft skills training and this skill training and a lot of those trainings can happen online. We need a, a good quality video. The, the connection, the internet is pretty bad, you know. Not that bad, of course, in the cities it's, it's much better, but you never know, right? So everyone wants videos to be uploaded somewhere on the website or on the YouTube channel and then people can watch it whenever they want. We are uh, looking at a lot of these training videos. Training videos are going to gain a lot of momentum. Oh. That's a good idea. That's, that's a great idea. We want to do a lot of entertainment videos, but uh, uh, a company like us, it's, it's not the right way because we are not going to be getting those funds, those sponsors for, for videos. Of course, it's a great time for Amazon and Netflix in India. Yeah, it's, everywhere. Yeah, well, um, so you I, think I that seen... your industry in terms of entertainment is going to be affected heavily by this? You, do you think that um, companies are, will be less likely to fund such entertainment uh, videos? I would think that okay. they would be okay with something like that, seeing as how uh, Netflix and Amazon, as you mentioned, is conquering the world right now. Now let's come to my favorite topic is that's Bollywood. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll tell you how how it's affected Bollywood, the good side and the bad side. So uh, Bollywood or the Indian film industry is the largest producer of films in the world. Right? You guys know that, right? We produce yeah. uh, roughly around 1000 films a year in, in all languages. Um, so there has been no no shoots happening for the last three, four months. Nothing um, at all. Nothing at all. Nothing. Wow. Okay. Again, what happens? Again, it's the same situation in this industry. On a shoot uh, uh, in a regular Bollywood film at one set, at a given time, there are at least 500 to 600 people working on a film set. Yeah. And imagine multiple shoots happening in a day. So the cameraman, the assistants, uh, yeah, yeah. the staff, of the makeup, all of that, all of them are unemployed. All of them are unemployed, including uh, the cinema halls and the support staff there and all of that. Are people not allowed to go to, uh, to the movie theater? Is that um, forbidden oh, as well right now? Cinema halls are shut. OK. And they yeah, will be shut through the year, through December. Wow. Oh, wow, really? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, uh, they haven't opened them in Cyprus either, but they were talking about opening them in uh, in early July. So, yeah, I find it really strange that they stay until December. That's huge, isn't it, Andrada? I mean, especially for the movie it's, industry. Yeah, and and I know that especially in India, a lot of people like go to the movie theater very often because it's like yeah, Bollywood is huge it's, there. It's like the community watching that's why uh, they are avoiding that yeah people go in tens and twenties like like whole family will go all of that yeah uh, so andrada yeah, like possibly. you know how you create movies and you you're also into production and all that like how do you think it's going to change for you especially with your team will it be hard to bring people uh, to do this kind of job, will everybody be having? I mean, everyone will have to wear face masks and all this thing. I mean, will it change even the way the actors uh, are on screen? I mean, how exactly is it going to work? Um, most likely, I mean, I had this uh, short film uh, that I was supposed to shoot back in April, and it wasn't a big story. It was just a little story with a couple. Uh, but you know, the two actors they have to. Add act like their husband and wife and they had to be super close together and they had to kiss and everything and so we spoke to the producer and we said yeah there's no way we can do it now so let's because also we cannot unless we change the story we cannot make them wear a mask on it in every scene um it's ridiculous because the story is not about the pandemic so then we we decided to postpone to november 
Um, but I'm not confident that we can even do it in November. Um, we'll see. Uh, but if we do shoot, I'm going to insist that everybody on set, and we're going to be a small team, like maybe six people at most, uh, just a technical crew. But I'm going to insist that, yes, everybody wears a mask. Um, we all have disinfectant. We leave our shoes in a secluded area of the set. Um it's going to be tough. It's changed everything. Um, I mean, especially... I, I hear... Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say that I hear some countries are trying to get uh, back into the industry, like like Iceland. I think I mentioned that before, how um, they have these remote areas that are really nice, uh, mountains and everything that's supposed to be wild. And so they bring, they allow crews from Hollywood, say, to come in and just stay there. And they are all under like a self-imposed quarantine. So it's a crew of 200 people. They all stay there. They shoot. They don't go out at all to other parts of Iceland. Uh, and when they're done with the shooting, three weeks, four weeks later, they just go all, they go back home. Uh, so they just they bring them in. They allow them to shoot so they can make more money. And then they go out. Uh, probably for some countries, it's this is going to work. If, yeah, so, if so most probably in Kabir for India, that would be the plan, no? I mean, it's a, like an isolated place where people can create films and maybe they don't go home until the, I don't know, the scene they shoot is over. Yeah, so I've been watching a, watching a lot of podcasts of Indian directors. Uh, yeah, that's what they're looking at. They're looking at reducing the size of the crew and uh, shoot maximum scenes at one location that could stay at that location, just contain that location for how many days of the shoot, and then come back and stay in isolation. Right, That's right. Pretty, uh, also, the TV industry is huge here. So they are planning the same for the TV industry. Uh, and TV industry is about to resume in the next seven days. Oh. Meaning they're going to start shooting all the reality shows and everything or they're going to do live uh, shows yeah, or? Not, the, uh, not the reality shows uh, we have the daily daily soaps uh, right and those are mostly uh, those are mostly stories about uh, about indian families seeing one family my parents in romania they watch those so yeah i, I yeah. know them yeah they're famous everywhere <laughs> in the world so do you think they're gonna do you think they're gonna adapt the story to uh, include COVID-19 into this series because they're supposed to be reflecting everyday life as well right um I am I am pretty much sure when it comes to the daily soaps uh they will be doing that for sure uh, because uh, soaps are all about uh uh, what the sister-in-law is talking to other sister-in-law and what the mother-in-law has to say. <laughs> the whole story revolves around our own family. It's just in one house. Like a whole big Indian family eating together, and all of that. So I pretty much see COVID scenes coming in there. Sorry, Imagine. just to sorry, just to backtrack a second. You know, like you said, like the the teams are gonna be smaller when creating these scenes and movies and stuff. Do you reckon that many in Indians that are in this huge industry will start to try and find jobs outside of the country, or is it just not worth it because it's gonna be the same in every other country as well? Uh, I think. Uh... This this is a very very interesting situation for India when it comes to entertainment, uh, because the the Indian content on Netflix and Amazon is is mind boggling. It's superb. It's, it's it's ten times better than than what the regular Bollywood films are. Ah, really? Wow. And uh, it's gaining a lot of popularity. It's gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, the numbers are still restricted to cities. The subscriptions are increasing. So I see a lot of this uh, this staff, this labor, uh, shooting for a Netflix original, for an Amazon original. Apart from Netflix and Amazon, we have about 10 other OTT channels already. OK. So there is a lot of OTT content produced in India, and uh, the quality is superb. It 
So maybe Andrade it would be the other way around. Uh, maybe like uh, people from Europe or from anywhere else might want to go to India and work if if it's the, if if it only gets bigger. I heard uh, that it's already happening. I hear that um, in in this so yeah in in this series there's um, you know like Americans or Europeans uh, getting like small uh, roles like oh we have this visiting uh, white guy coming from America and he has a few episodes there. So I, I hear a lot of people are doing that actually. Um, so that actually would be a lot of fun. I would. More than that, uh, more than the, uh, the the technical stuff, cinematographers, the background score musicians, oh, most that? of the technical okay. directors, all of them, all of them are from Hollywood country. All of them are from outside. I mean, awesome that there's it's growing and there's such demand. That means yeah, it's it's big. And uh, hence, I'm saying, uh, hence the quality of the OTT content has gone miles up. Uh, because of this technical expertise from the West. Excellent. And when did this start? Did it start in the last two, three years, or it's much earlier than that? Uh, 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 last, last two, three years. Okay. Okay. That's wonderful. I mean, it's it's great to know. Not yeah, Android man. We can we can go. talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we can, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking. I would love to um, give it a shot. Just have a taste of uh, of Bollywood. Um, we can go on and on, but um, yeah, this is. Um, it's. We should probably let Kabir go. Um, yeah. It's, uh, getting towards the end of our of our show, uh, but it was really nice to talk to you, Kabir. It's. Uh, it's it was great to catch up, and it was good to. Um, you know, understand what's happening in India. I hope things are going to get better soon. They are getting better in Europe, but we are um, on the brink of a second wave, I think. So everything right. is volatile yeah, right now. Waiting. So uh, I guess we all are waiting for the last two. Yeah, exactly. Uh, any any closing words, Kabir, before we go? My closing words are mostly personal. Yeah, it, it's it's great to talk uh, to you guys and. and you guys after after such a long time and, and i guess um had this feeling for a while i guess it's the first time for mankind everyone across the globe are in the same situation and can relate to each other right i guess that has never ever i was thinking the same how we're really in the same situation and we're going through the same things no matter where we are yeah it's right. true and hopefully, as uh, humanity, we all come together and try and find a solution for this. And I mean, we have to get through it. We always have done. So on that positive note, yeah, yeah. thank you again, Kabir, for being with us. I'm sure we're going to talk again in the future. And we'll see you guys next week with another episode. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.